குட் ஈவினிங் எவ்ரிபடி இட்ஸ் மை கிரேட் ப்ரெஷர் டு மீட் யூ ஆல் அகர முதல எழுத்தெல்லாம் ஆதி பகவான் முதற்றே உலகு எனிங் அண்ட் எவ்ரி திங் இஸ் பாசிபிள் ஒன்லி பை காட் பிரேயர் இஸ் த வே டு கெட் ஆல் பாசிட்டிவிட்டி ஃபார் சக்சஸ் ஸோ லெட்ஸ் ஸ்டார்ட் த ப்ரோக்ராம் வித் பிரேயர் வந்தாரை வாழ வைக்கும் தமிழ்நாடு இது 
Now I call upon our department staff, Mr. Balaji sir, to deliver welcome address. Please sir. Good evening to all. I feel very happy to deliver welcome address before you. First of all, I would like to welcome our beloved principal, Dr. B. Sundarabandin sir. Sir, give a great moral support to organize this national level webinar. Then I welcome our beloved SF coordinator, sir, Dr. R. Palanipan, sir, felicitating this webinar. And I welcome our today resource person, Dr. D. Kumareshan, sir. Next, I welcome our head of the department, Mr. S. Salmanan, sir. Last but not least, I welcome all the participants of today's national level webinar. Once again, I welcome one and all. Thank you. Nanmayum Timayum Nadi Nalam Purinda Tanmayan Alapadum. It's my great pleasure to invite our college principal sir, Dr. B. Sound Sundarabadin sir, for presidential address. Sir, please. Good evening to all of you. Balaji Konya Mike Apanir. Learner professors, invited personalities, my dear colleagues and all participants. It gives me immense pleasure to extend a warm welcome on behalf of PH and Sindhik Manadar College Autonomous Virudhanagar for this one day national level webinar on glimpses of new education policy 2020. Organized by Department of Commerce Self-Funded. This topic will serve very useful for the students because the national education policy announced by the government of India on July 29, 2020, comes nearly three decades after the previous policy was notified. During this time, the world has changed and so has India in terms of youth aspirations and the workplace, skill and culture. Keeping with the need to change with time and align India's education system to contemporary practices followed globally, the new policy brings in transformational changes in school and higher education. The policy's primary focus is on standardizing the quality of education across the country, provide requisite flexibilities to students in charting their careers and aligning education with the needs of the workplace, skill and culture of the future. More inputs will be thrown by our chief guest on national education policy and also, I congratulate the Department of Commerce self funded for their painstaking efforts in organizing this one day webinar on glimpses of new education policy 2020. I thank and welcome the Chief Guest, the Kumaration, Principal, Lachunarayana Arts and Science College for Women, Armovri, who have consented to share his ideas on national education policy. A wholehearted wishes to the convener, Mr. Silvanathan, here at the Department of Commerce self funded and the organizing committee members, Mr. Balaji, Alex Sigamani, Raju Mohan, and uh, Siva Sundari, and our students. I deem it proud to inaugurate the one-day webinar on glimpses of National Education Policy 2020 and visit a grand success. Thank you very much. Magilchi, Idanai Idanar. Even Murikum Endraindu, Adanai Avankan Vidal. It's my privilege to welcome our coordinator, sir, Dr. R. Palnepan, sir, for felicitation. Respected principal, uh, chief guest of today's function, Dr. Kumarayasan from Thermopri, dear faculty members of Commerce SF, learned faculty members from India National Level Webinar on Glimpses of National Education Policy 2020. A very good evening to all of you, roughly 100 and odd participants in this online meet. Really a happy occasion because the, the need of the hour is to know what uh, the government's policy is on the educational scenario. The changing scenario requisites many dynamics in people. Perhaps the 
chief guest dr kumarayan would be enlightening us with all necessary inputs that are needed by the younger generation to know what the new education policy is how far the new education policy could be uh, useful for our uh, people to come up in their life and make their career more beneficial really uh, wonderful topic taken by the department of commerce sir and uh, giving a limelight to all the uh, participants hopefully many in the crown of phnsm uh, really we are adding many such a conferences in the, in the past during this pandemic situation we have been doing large amount of work to give larger amount of input both to, to academicians and, and to the student community really uh, in the chemistry are making larger set of uh, academic programs to improvise both uh, the society and as well as the community in this regard i thank our college principal for the team in academics to make students molded to higher heights and uh, really i thank dr kumarayan for to accepted our offer thank you very much sir for to being with us i am really happy to felicitate in this function i wish this uh, uh, national webinar on glimpses of national education policy 2020 will surely be beneficial to all of us in the platform and we will be spreading the message to every one of us thank you very much sir for thank you mikka nandri vinay tippam endadu orvan manathippam matra ellam pira now i invite our hod sir sir yes sayyamadan sir to introduce the chief guest sir please yes ma'am thank you ma'am good evening to all we know the national education policy is the current and the innovative topic this topic is necessary to our students and the staff members at large to give detailed note on national education policy we do have a wonderful resource person dr d gumeshan sir completed himphil and phd in commerce he has completed chartered accountancy ca course intermediate he has complete he has acted as a external examiner for the conduct of phd public viva examination for 14 candidates he has acted as a resource person for more than 80 international national conferences seminars and for more than 40 webinars he is a motivational speaker and has served as the resource resource person for more than 100 motivational programs he has conducted training programs on positive thinking time management memory techniques and stress management his research research activities are he has guided five phd scholars and 22 mphil scholars under his consultancy more than 120 phd scholars have got their doctoral degree he is proficient in performing data analysis with the statistical packages spss and has conducted over 70 workshops on research methodology and data analysis using spss in reputed universities and the colleges in various states of the country he has published more than 40 papers article in refereed journals we are happy to have our chief guest dr d gumeshan sir for the wonderful program thank you sir thank you thanks nandri kottane thoorum manarkeni maandarku kattane thoorum arivu now the session hand over to the resource person today's hero dr d kumarayan sir principal of lakshmi narayana arts and science college for women dharmaburi sir please sir thank you the most respected principal of vhs central kumar nadar college dr sundra pandian sir the coordinator of uh, self financing courses dr palni pan sir respected uh, uh, head of the department professor selvanathan sir learned faculty members and all the participants both in the google meet as well as in the youtube a warm and good evening to one and all at the very outset i would like to thank the management principal faculty members and the organizing team for having given me a wonderful opportunity to share 
sum up my views on national education policy 2020 i deem it a great privilege to be the resource person on this wonderful occasion i would like to appreciate the efforts of the department of commerce self funded for having initiated to conduct such a webinar to throw light upon the special futures of this wonderful national education policy 2020 being academicians we should be knowing uh, what are the contents of the national education policy and how it is going to be benefited uh, to the uh, uh, student community as well as the uh, faculty so for that purpose only this program has been organized and now let me uh, present the screen sir is it visible sir yes sir okay sir thank you sir first of all as our principal told the national education policy 2020 has come out after more than 3 decades in the independent india after the country has got freedom from the british government till 1968 the old sir, policies sir, 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 sir sorry for disturbing sir full screen mode for fm mode click panikonga full screen view varatum sir full screen potta sir full okay. screen illa fm click panikonga sir keep on fm okay. okay sir ipo okay va and varala sir from beginning kudu is it okay sir சரி இப்போ வந்துருச்சா சரி கீபோர்ட்ல வருது சார் F5 மட்டும் கிளிக் பண்ணுங்க சார் கீபோர்ட்ல F5 இல்லை F5 தான் கிளிக் பண்ணிட்டேன் எனக்கு ফুল ஸ்கிரீன் தான் தெரியுது ஆ ஓகே சார் ஓகே சார் ஓகே வைப்ப ஓகே சார் ஓகே சார் थैंक यू சார் கண்டினியூ ரைட் थैंक यू ஆஃப்டர் आवर कंट्री ஹஸ் got இன்டிபெண்டன்ஸ் फ्रॉम द பிரிட்டிஷ் கவர்மெண்ட் டில் 1968 we are following the old policies framed by the government uh, british government so in the year 1968 when uh, madam indira gandhi was the prime minister the first ever national policy on education was introduced in the independent india after that when rajiv gandhi was the prime minister of our country in 1986 the another policy on education was introduced after that from 1986 till 2020 for almost 36 years no separate education policy has been introduced or implemented in our country so whatever contents were there in the policy introduced by the erstwhile prime minister rajiv gandhi were followed in our country since 1986 but then and there certain changes have been made in the policy however having realized the need for new policy on education our honorable prime minister narendra modi ji has taken a great initiative to introduce such a 
National Education Policy 2020. The draft policy has been introduced first and there were lot of consultation among the stakeholders in the states and union territories of the country. Governors, vice chancellors, academicians, teachers, parents and students, uh, they, they have participated in the uh, consulting on the national education policy and finally the policy has been introduced at the right time. It has been considered as the landmark change by the government of India because so many revolutionary reforms have been made in the Indian education policy according to the National Education Policy 2020. For every country, the real economic growth depends upon the education development. So education is one of the determinants of the economic growth of every country. Accordingly, NEP 2020 has given a lot of uh, uh, reforms to make the country rich and economically we should be in the top position. That was the prime focus of national education policy. See, in 9th century and 10th century AD, we were the richest country of the world. We had so much of wealth. We had so much of resources. And even after independence, we have plenty of resources, natural resources, mineral resources, human resources. In spite of that, still, we are not able to attain the status of developed economy. Why we are still lacking? We have to achieve a lot in the education because education is a true indicator of economic strength. So we have to go a long way in the education sector. For that purpose, the NEP 2020 has been introduced and it is assumed and we hope that it will certainly help India break into or step into top three economies of the world in the next 10 years. By the year 2030, it is expected that India will be one of the top three economies of the world and we will be attaining the uh, developed economy uh, status. So it is the prime focus or primary objective of national education policy. And what are the national education policy 2020's principles? What made the government to introduce such a national education policy. There should be a holistic development of students in both academic and non-academic spheres. It is not enough, not just enough to have academically developed. The students need not be developed in academic spheres only. There must be some development among the students in non-academic spheres also. So, mind development must be there. Spiritual development must be there. Emotional development must be there. Social development must be there. Physical must, development must be there. In all these non-academic spheres, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, socially and physically, Every student must be strong enough to fight for the country, to work for the country, to help the country develop in the uh, next 10 years. We should reach the developed economic status. We should get the uh, status of developed economy 
through the development of education. So this is the foremost principle of National Education Policy 2020. Then it is expected, it is aimed that we should have foundational literacy and numeracy. This should happen 100%, 10% foundational literacy and numeracy should be achieved in the next 10 to 15 years. What is foundational literacy? The basic knowledge about the alphabets, about the language, about the characters, everyone, every children, every citizen should have the basic knowledge, the fundamental knowledge about the alphabets. So that is called foundational literacy. Likewise, there should be foundational numeracy. That is basic operations in numbers like addition, subtraction, division, multiplication. So all these basic operations of numbers must be known to everybody. Every citizen should have that kind of foundational literacy as well as the foundational numeracy. This kind of achievement should be made in the next 10 to 15 years. So this is another principle of NEP 2020. Then the third one is, see here, the academic streams have been categorized as arts, science and social science. Hereafter, the focus is given on combining or merging all these streams together like an art student can choose any science subject as one of his electives. Like that, likewise a science student can select any arts or social science subject as one of his electives. So here the policy on education concentrates on the multidisciplinary education. Earlier it was there, but when the English education system was introduced by the British government, the specialization has been concentrated on and the multidisciplinary education system has been left. So we have to bring back that kind of multidisciplinary education. So there should be no uh, a barrier in between arts, science and social science. So there should be a blended educational system. For that purpose, this uh, education policy provides for multidisciplinary education. Then at another principle of NEP 2020 is there, that is called conceptual understanding. We know pretty well the existing system of education focuses its attention on the results, on the marks. Can we assure that those who have got the topest marks are able to succeed in their higher education? Certainly there is a question mark. The state toppers in the uh, higher secondary education, when they come to the college, they are struggling to get through the papers in the uh, academic streams in the colleges. Sorry, is the slide appearing? Hello? Hello, sir? Yes, sir. Is the slide changed? Yes, sir. Changed, sir. Okay, okay. So, so now principles of NEP yeah. 2020, sir. Oh, yes, yes. Con yes. Conceptual understanding slide is there, no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Here, we are following the road memory system. 
road learning just memorizing everything so that is not enough we have to understand the concept we have to learn the concept so that is called conceptual learning here the national education policy 2020 emphasizes the conceptual learning rather than the rote learning and finally the creativity and critical thinking should be encouraged should be developed among the students so the creativity must be there the students should have the creative ideas critical thinking logical ideas and innovative ideas should be developed in their minds the uh, proposed policy helps the students to develop their creativity their innovative thinking their critical thinking these are the major principles of nep 2020 and of course finally we have to follow the ethics and human values should be respected constitutional values should be given due respect these are the principles of ndp 2020 and now let us step into the policy what are the highlights of national education policy 2020 we can sum up or we can have a synopsis that there are five major highlights number 1 the schooling begins from the age of 3 years itself in the present education system the students are admitted into the class 1 at the age of 6 but in fact the students are the children before the age of 6 they develop their intellectual uh, mind their brain development starts even from the age of 3 so they should be brought into the mainstream of mainstream of education so from the age of 3 itself the schooling begins according to the new education policy so from 3 years till the age of 8 years it is first layer of the school education system according to the proposed policy then 8 to 11 then 11 to 14 then 14 to 18 the present system of school education is 10 plus 2 the structure of present education system in the school followed is 10 plus 2 structure now it is to be modified into 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 let me explain in detail in the next slides the second highlight is mother tongue this mother tongue is to be inserted it should be insisted as a medium of instruction it is mandatory for every educational institution to teach the children up to standard 5 up to class 5 or the fifth standard all the subjects should be taught to the children in their own mother tongue or regional language or local language and if they desire it can be extended up to the eighth standard so mother tongue is given importance whatever we learn if we are able to learn any concept in our own mother tongue it will be in our mind forever if we are learning something in any other languages there could be a possibility of uh, leaving the, the concepts so we have to keep in memory all the things we have to keep the concepts in our mind means it is always better to learn the concepts in our own mother tongue mother tongue or local or regional languages that has been uh, introduced and inserted in the national education policy 2020 up to fifth standard we have to learn all the subjects all the concepts only through mother tongue and here one thing i want to let you know the uh, 
three language policy three lingual policy is also introduced but here there is no compulsion on anybody to choose any particular language sanskrit is said sanskrit is there hindi is there urdu is there malayalam is there kannada is there telugu is there uh, odisha is there whatever language you want to choose as the third language you can choose at your own discretion there is no compulsory at all on anybody so this is the second highlight of the proposed education policy 2020 then the third one is a single overarching body of higher education at present we have different bodies to control and regulate the different education streams say for example university grants commission is there all india council for technical education is there medical council of india is there likewise different apex bodies are there different policies are there different set of regulations are there but here the proposed policy wants to combine or merge all the higher educational uh, regulative bodies except medical and legal studies that is for uh, medical field and law field the existing apex bodies will be regulating those colleges and higher educational institutions apart from uh, medical colleges and law colleges all the other higher educational institutions will be governed monitored and regulated under a separate single overarching body of higher education called higher education commission of india hcca will be taking care of all the uh, higher educational institutions in the country so that the regulations will be alike for arts colleges for engineering colleges for uh, 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 bh colleges and all other colleges the regulations will be one and same because the regulating body is one and same so it is at another uh, highlight of the national education policy 2020 then as i told you the separation between subject streams to be blurred so separation this is arts this is science this is social science like that that separation of subject streams has been eliminated stream will be done away with so here no specific stream so here the students are at liberty to choose their favorite subjects any subject they can choose for example a bcom student can choose physics or chemistry as one of his subjects if he or she desires if she is willing or if he is willing to study a physics subject or chemistry subject as one of his subjects in his course even if he is a bcom student or even if he is a ba english literature student if he desires he can choose any subject so, so the students are given liberty to choose any subject and moreover vocational education formal vocational education system is to be introduced from class 6 so every student who is uh, undergoing the 6th standard from the 6th standard onwards formal vocational education is to be introduced then the fourth i mean the fifth main highlight of the policy is curtailing the dropouts we know pretty well many students are uh, are discontinuing their courses because of so many reasons so the dropout rate rate is increasing day by day in order to curtail or control the dropouts here the national education policy has introduced two important features 
one is multiple exit options and the other is academic bank of credit called abc multiple exit options at any time during the course of degree any student can exit with certificate with fruitful results he can exit the course or he can discontinue the course so that is one of the futures of the national education policy 2020 and regarding the academic bank of credit last week the ugc has sent circular to all the colleges we know pretty well and let me explain all these futures in detail in the coming slides so these are the major highlights school education system is restructured into four layered structure mother tongue is instituted a uh, single body is controlling all the higher educational institutions in the country and uh, the multidisciplinary education system is to be introduced finally dropouts are to be curtailed uh, by introducing the multiple exit options at the same time multiple entry opportunities are also given to the students then academic bank of credit abc is introduced in order to give uh, credit to the uh, uh, drop out students so these are the major highlights let us go into detail the total policy on education nep 2020 contains two parts one is school education and the other is higher education regarding the school education at present what is happening is the children in the age group of 3 to 6 are not covered the education system in the proposed uh, i mean in the pre, uh, present system starts uh, at the age of 6 uh, only excuse me sir slide move aliya sir enak move aitu ke endha varen சார் இப்போ சேஞ்ச் ஆயிருக்கா சார் இஸ் அ பார்ட் ஒன் ஸ்கூல் எஜுகேஷன் சார் நவ் பீம் சார் ஆ ஓகே थैंक यू Yes, sir. I don't know what has happened. <laughs> okay. Nothing, sir. Right. In the present education system, the school education starts at the age of six only. That is uh, from first standard to the twelfth standard. That is only covered in the uh, present school education. But what about the students or the children? in the age group of 3 to 6 we are admitting them in the play school in the kids school in the kindergarten they are having the education but they are not covered under the uh, 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 mainstream of education that is not governed by any legislature so they should be brought into the uh, mainstream of education because they are education is not covered properly in the mainstream of education so we have to bring them into the uh, mainstream of education that is a uh, uh, objective of introducing or changing this uh, education system in the schools followed so here children in the age group of 3 to 6 are now brought into the mainstream of education so as i told you the class 1 begins at the age of 6 only according to the uh, national education policy 2020 the proposed uh, structure structural change or structural reform in the school education is the 10 plus 2 structure the two layered 10 plus 2 structure is now modified into four layered structure that is 5 plus 3 plus 3 and plus 4 so 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 is the proposed school education structure here 
a strong base of ECCE, that is early childhood care and education, is now introduced. From the age of three, they are included in the mainstream of education. The aim of uh, uh, this ECCE is to promote better overall learning, better development and well-being of the children. We have to provide better overall learning to the children. So that is to be promoted because even at the age of three itself, the students are able to learn. They are able to uh, have the intellectual development. So that is to be uh, focused. That is to be concentrated upon. For that purpose, the uh, students or the children from the age of three up to six, they are now covered. They are now brought into the uh, proper educational system. See, this is the, uh, a comparison of structures. Previous or the existing academic structure, that is from age 6 to 16, 10 years they are studying from 1st standard to the 10th standard or SSLC. So for 10 years they are studying. After that, in the higher secondary, two years they are studying from age 16 to 18. So 10 plus 2 is the present academic structure. Now it is changed. Now it is proposed to be changed in the NEP 2020. That is 4, I mean 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4. The first layer, that is 5, first layer of the proposed uh, school education system is called foundational layer. Here, it is again bifurcated into two. The first five years of education, that is from the age of 3 to 8, from the age of 3 to 8, the children are studying foundational educational education that is again divided into two that is from the age of three to six three years they are learning the basic or the foundational literacy in the Anganwadi preschool and Balvatika so this is the place where these children are accommodated even in the proposed system Is it okay? Yes, sir. Okay. So the first layer is foundational system that is foundational education from the age of three to six they are in the Anganwadi centers preschool and Balvatika after that after completing the first three years of their education they come to first standard and the second standard so from the age of six to eight two more years they are studying in the foundational layer of the school education system then the second layer is preparatory system, preparatory layer. Here the students are admitted in the age of 8 till the age of 11. They are studying uh, from the third standard to the fifth standard. So three years they are studying here. After that, the middle layer, that is uh, from the age of 11 to 14, they are studying from the sixth standard to the eighth standard. So three years they are studying middle education. After that, the topmost layer of the school education system is secondary education, that is uh, from the age of 14 to the age of 18, that is uh, uh, ninth standard to 12th standard. So for four years, they are studying the topmost layer of the school education system. Now, 
the early childhood care and education ecce we know pretty well over 85% of a child's cumulative brain development so the brain development of every child almost over 85% of the children are having their brain development even prior to the age of 6 we have seen we have experienced it from our own children that they have the intellectual development they have the brain development they have the iq even before the age of 6 then why should we wait till the age of 6 we are admitting them in the play school we are admitting them in the kids school or kindergarten why don't we admit them in the proper education system having realized uh, uh, this situation the national education policy 2020 uh, paves the way for uh, admitting the children in the age of 3 itself in the age of 3 itself to the uh, school education system so ecce ideally consists of flexible education system here there is no rigid educational system in the ecce it is multifaceted different uh, uh, concepts are followed different structures are followed to teach the children at the multi level it is play based it is activity based and of course inquiry based inquiry based learning is one of the most essential part of learning for every children we should allow the students to ask the questions we should allow or we should permit the children to enquire whatever they want to ask so they have to interact with the teachers we have to encourage them to make any kind of enquiries regarding the education we have to encourage the children to ask more and more questions only when they ask questions they can get the answers which they have doubt in their minds it is our responsibility to clarify the doubts of our own children so here the ecce concentrates on the inquiry based learning it comprises of alphabets the children at the early childhood care and education are introduced alphabets first alphabets then the languages then numbers then basic operations as i told you know counting then colors the children are to be taught about the colors shapes as well as the games the indoor games outdoor games puzzles and of course logical thinking these are the essentials essential requirements for every children to have wonderful learning so we are providing better learning experience pleasant learning experience to the children by using play based activity based and inquiry based learning to the children then anganwadi centers the existing anganwadi centers are going to be strengthened because at present they may not have good infrastructure they may not have good equipments and the workers in the uh, anganwadi centers may not be well trained or the teachers may not be well trained or well equipped here according to the uh, proposed policy it is to be strengthened the anganwadi centers are to be strengthened with high quality of infrastructure the infrastructure is to be provided with high quality sophisticated infrastructure will be provided for the anganwadi centers and of course wonderful play equipments are also to be provided and above all the main requirement is 
the uh, workers and the teachers are to be well trained it is proposed to give proper training to the existing anganwadi workers as well as the teachers every anganwadi will have a well ventilated well designed child friendly that is must the infrastructure must be must be child friendly the environment must be child friendly so that is focused and well constructed building with an enriched learning environment there should be a, 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 a calm and pleasant environment that could enrich the learning environment of our children and the existing anganwadi workers or teachers if they don't have qualification as per the ECCE norms what we are going to do we are categorizing the existing workers or teachers into two categories if their educational qualification is 10 plus 2 and above the existing workers in the anganwadi existing teachers in the anganwadi centers if they possess 10 plus 2 and above education we will be providing a certificate program in ecce for a duration of 6 months so this kind of uh, certificate program will be very useful for the existing anganwadi workers and the teachers to inculcate the proposed ecce to the children for that purpose they will be given 6 months certificate program what about the teachers coming uh, below 10th uh, standard qualification they will be given a uh, one year program one year diploma program will be offered to those who have lower educational qualification who have the educational qualification below 10th standard they will be given one year diploma program covering early literacy numeracy and other relevant aspects of ecce so the teachers existing are uh, working currently they are divided into two those who have educational qualification of 10 plus 2 and above they will be given a certificate program for 6 months those who have lower educational qualifications will be offered one year diploma program in order to equip themselves in the ecce and of course your question will be whether doing this program will affect their work their own work their current work certainly not because it is proposed that these programs will be offered through digital mode or distance mode using dth channels as well as smartphones allowing the teachers to acquire ecce qualifications with minimal disruption to their current work of course we cannot uh, 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 neglect that their work will not be disrupted there could be some disruption but it would be very minimum then clear the foundational literacy and numeracy the ability to read and work the read and write the students will be able to read and write and perform the basic operations with numbers like addition subtraction multiply multiplication division and all it is a necessary for every children to have the strong education these are the foundations the ability to read and write ability to perform basic operations with numbers that is the foundation and it is an indispensable prerequisite for future schooling for lifelong learning this is must and this is to be provided to the children the highest priority is given to achieve universal foundational literacy and numeracy in primary school by the year 2025 it is proposed it is expected that this kind of 
universal foundational literacy universal means for all for all the children for all the citizen citizens in the, in the country should have the foundational or the basic literacy and numeracy in in the primary school level by the year 2025 then in order to promote the foundational literacy and numeracy we need more and more teachers at present there are so many vacancies for the teachers and the steps are to be taken to fill up the teacher vacancies immediately at the earliest in a time bounded manner while appointing the teachers for the existing vacancies in the uh, schools there are three areas to be covered to be focused one is the under privileged areas or deprived or disadvantaged areas where the children are having less privileges that kind of areas are to be uh, given first priority for filling up the teacher vacancies and the second one is the areas in which the pupil to teacher ratios are large so pupil to teacher ratios are to be reduced to a uh, to the greatest extent so the areas where the ptr the people to teach ratio is high that areas are to be given second priority and the third priority is given to the areas where the illiteracy rate is high so the teacher vacancies are to be filled at the earliest in a time bounded manner especially in the disadvantaged advantaged areas and the areas with the large ptr ratios are high rates of illiteracy right then what about the appointment of teachers while appointing the teachers the government proposes that the priority is to be given for the local teachers why because they may be familiar with the local languages with the regional languages the nep 2020 provides for that the mother tongue is to be uh, uh, instated that is to be that is the mandatory a uh, medium of instruction up to fifth standard so mother tongue or regional language or local language must be there as the medium of instruction up to fifth standard and that too it is given at the option of the children that it may be extended up to the eighth standard in that case it is always better to employ the local teachers because they may be familiar with the local language or otherwise if we employ the teachers from other areas they may be uh, struggling with the local or regional languages so the attention will be given for employing local teachers or those with familiarity with the local languages then as i told you ptr ratio ptr ratio of under 30 is to 1 at present the existing ptr ratio is 30 is to 1 for every 30 student one staff member is there one teacher is there it is uh, proposed to reduce to the extent of 25 is to 1 as far as possible in the areas having large numbers of socially and economically disadvantaged disadvantaged students the aim is to reduce the ptr under 25 is to 1 uh, uh, while when comparing with the existing 30 is to 1 ratio so it is decided or it is focused to reduce the ptr ratio under 25 is to 1 then 
curtailing dropout ratios dropout rates and ensuring universal access to education at all levels see here as i told you know dropouts are there it is a, a, a concern of the uh, educational sector throughout the country there are more dropouts the dropout rate is high in the schools in the higher educational institutions because of so many reasons their personal reasons their family background their uh, socio economic background whatever it is dropout rate is high here we propose to curtail to control the dropout ratios and we ensure universal access to education at all levels for that purpose the curriculum and pedagogy in schools have been designed such as holistic integrated enjoyable and engaging so that the students will never leave the school will never be dropped out if it is holistic the wholesome development as i told you know a mind development emotional development physical development emotional development and the social development if they develop in all these spheres we call it as holistic development if the development is holistic certainly the children will never drop out so that should be an integrated uh, learning that should be enjoyable and engaging the students for that purpose the school curriculum and pedagogy is restructured into the new design of 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 here it is uh, also proposed to reduce the curriculum content to the maximum extent possible in order to enhance the essential learning and critical thinking here the concern of the government our concern of the new policy is that not about the teaching but about the learning how far the students have learned if they do not learn what is taught then there is no use of teaching so if the curriculum content is high and if the students are not able to follow we have to reduce the curriculum content because outcome based education must be there for that purpose the content of curriculum is to be reduced to the extent of possible then here as i told you the learning will be giving pleasant experience to the children so experiential learning should be introduced that is hands on learning is given arts integrated he is an art student but he is studying the other stream other streams of education also as i told you an art student say uh, if he wants to study physics chemistry or botany he can choose similarly sports that is also integrated with other education then storytelling based pedagogy the children are able to follow the concepts if it is start with the uh, storytelling pedagogy they are uh, interested in uh, listening to the stories so we have to introduce we have to tell stories to make the students uh, enjoy the teaching so that kind of pedagogy is to be uh, introduced in the experiential learning okay this is what about uh, teaching what about the learning outcome that outcome is to be assessed so the assessment tools are to be aligned in tuned in tune with the learning outcomes what are the capabilities of the children what are the dispositions such as uh, specified uh, uh, disposition or outcome for each subject of a given class so here assessment tools to be introduced are as of and for so these kind of assessment tools are to be introduced 
then any other futures are there yes empower the students through flexibility in course choices any course he can choose i told you no similarly the multilingualism that is a power of language is it okay sir yes sir now it is sir ah oh. okay other pictures please sir yes so it empowers the students through flexibility in course choices then multilingualism as i told you different languages are learned their mother tongue is learned of course up to fifth standard the uh, uh, all the subjects are taught in their mother tongue so one language is over another one universal language that is uh, the communication language that is english they learn english also so two languages then the third one enhances the a uh, a potential of the students so if they know more languages they may have potent more potentials so in order to enhance the potential in order to enhance the opportunities for the students the third language is uh, to be introduced so that is called multilingualism here one thing we have to understand that no language is insisted no language is made compulsory or mandatory it is left to the choice of the students they can choose any language as the third language and regarding the gifted students a great support is uh, offered in the nep 2020 and also for the students with the special talents you know pretty well the gifted students are the students requiring special education they have to go for the uh, special educational institutions only in the present education system but according to the proposed education system the teachers while pursuing the bet degree that is the uh, bachelor of education while doing that uh, degree they are uh, offered special education subject as one of their core subjects so every student every uh, teacher who is undergoing bet degree course will be able to teach the uh, um, uh, students who want the special education so earlier the students require the special education how to go for the special education institutions only like the uh, uh, physically challenged students or differently able students those who are uh, uh, having hearing uh, um, a problem hearing hearing impaired problem or uh, visually challenged students have to go for special educational institutions only but according to the uh, proposed policy all the teachers are given training they are studying the special education as one of their students if it is so they can handle uh, the subjects to the special children also gifted students also so in every institution all the staff members will be able to handle the subjects to the gifted students so it is the greatest support offered by the nep 2020 for gifted students so these are the uh, basic uh, reforms proposed to be made in the school education and let us come to the higher education system here we have a 
bright and prosperous uh, reform. Quality of universities and the colleges. The main focus, the main attention is paid by the NEP 2020 on enhancing the quality of the university and the colleges. The new and forward-looking vision for India's higher education system is nothing other than the NEP 2020. Here, the higher educational institutions are to be restructured and consolidated. Science and technology, engineering and mathematics. We call it as STEM, science and technology, engineering and mathematics. Of course, humanities and arts. They are to be integrated. So assessments of educational approaches in the undergraduate education Okay, sir. Is it moving? It's a clear support to higher education, sir. Ah, oh, yes. So, uh, assessment pattern is also to be changed. In the next one, the structure and the lens of degree programs shall be adjusted accordingly. At present, in arts and science colleges, the duration of the program is three years. Three years uh, degree uh, uh, program is offered at the undergraduate level. According to the proposed uh, education policy, the duration will be adjusted either to uh, uh, either it, it shall remain with a three years duration or it shall be adjusted as four years duration course with multiple exit options. Within this period, they are given multiple exit options and with appropriate certifications. Let us see how it is modified. See, as I told you know, the three years degree program or bachelor's degree program is offered at present in the existing system the bachelor's degree program is offered with a three years duration. Now, it is to be modified. It is to be changed. Whether it shall remain as three years or it shall be changed as four years. Okay. What about the dropout students? Suppose, if one of the students, after having completed his first year of the degree wants to discontinue the course. What happens, you know, in the existing system, he can get the mark sheets and go away. No certification is given. There is no course completion because he has discontinued. What about the employment opportunity? What about the career opportunity? He is a discontinued student. He has no certification. Just he is possessing his mark sheets. That's all. But according to the proposed policy, after completing one year, all the students understand whether he is continuing or drop out, discontinuing, all the students will be given a certificate after the completion of the first year of his program. Then, after the completion of second year, they will be given a diploma. So after completion of the first year, a certificate is issued. After the completion of the second year, a diploma is issued to the students. And after completion of the third year, the bachelor's degree is offered. Suppose if the student is pursuing three years degree course, he is getting one degree certificate after first year, one diploma after second year, and bachelor's degree after three years. So there are three certifications. 
according to the present system he may be getting the degree only if he completes the three years successfully if he uh, discontinues before the uh, course duration he may not be getting any certificate okay this is what about the three year degree program what about the fourth year one year is extended those who prefer the four year course may join or otherwise you can join three year course itself if you are joining the fourth year course you have plenty of opportunities plenty of advantages plenty of benefits what is it here the fourth year i mean four year program is multidisciplinary the fourth fourth year is a four year program is multidisciplinary here the students are allowed to have the uh, opportunity to have the full of full range of holistic and multidisciplinary education and the fourth year is meant for the research activities so that is what about the three year course and four year course during the course of education after completion of first year second year third year they are getting certification if they uh, pursue the four year degree course he will be given a, a multi disciplinary degree certificate after the completion of fourth year that is a bachelor's degree with research and what about the abc i told academic bank of credit that will be established the initiatives have been taken by the government in the uh, last week itself we have started towards establishing the academic bank of credit it is the digital storage of academic credits you know pretty well in the choice based credit system the students are getting credits for each and every course that is for every subject we call it as technically as course for every course they are getting some academic credits according to the proposed policy an academic bank of credit will be opened for all the students once they join the course an academic bank of credit is opened in his name and the credits so far uh, uh, he have earned will be uh, credited uh, uh, will be stored digitally in the academic bank of credit to open to him his name so in all the recognized higher educational institutions it will be the uh, uh, policy to be followed it will be the procedure to be adopted so here so far what subjects you have completed what credits you have earned is stored digitally what is the use sir why it is stored see it is stored in the academic bank of credit it is uh, followed throughout the country in all the recognized higher educational institutions suppose any student discontinues his course during this period as i told you know 3 years or 4 years during this period if any student discontinues what credit he has earned so far is now stored digitally in his account in his academic bank of credit maybe he is from tamil nadu or he is from kerala or he is from karnataka after discontinuance of his course say after one year or two years is uh, uh, a position has become better he wants to continue the course means at any place even in rajasthan even in sikkim even in himachal pradesh 
even in assam he can continue the same course with the academic credit he has already earned that has been stored digitally in the academic bank of credit he can continue the course from where he is living at present either in uttar pradesh or uttarakhand or chatisgarh wherever he is he can continue the same course without any difficulty irrespective of the institution irrespective of the university irrespective of the curriculum at present he can change the institution within the jurisdiction of the university only in between universities transfer takes place with a lot of cumbersome procedures complex procedures in between states in between different universities it is more complex but according to the proposed policy any time anywhere like atm to withdraw cash from the bank account any place anywhere in any university you can continue the same course suppose if you have discontinued after the first year of your course you can continue the same course from the second year onwards in any university in any college provided your uh, academic credit so far earned is there what is the uh, total credit required for the course in that university what credit so far you have earned is subtracted what is the remaining credits to be earned those subjects alone are required to be studied by the discontinued student who wants to continue his studies anywhere in the country what an amazing future of this wonderful uh, national education policy 2020 just look at this so anywhere any place any time he can continue the course academic bank of credit then as i told you the four year program may also lead to a degree with research if the student completes a rigorous research project in their major areas of study as specified by the higher education institution what is the uh, uh, situation of masters program already degree program is offered for 3 years and master program is offered for 2 years according to the proposed policy if any student pursues his bachelor's degree for 4 years what about the master's program yes there is a flexibility if you complete 3 years bachelor's degree you have to undergo 2 years master's degree if you complete 4 years bachelor's degree you you need not uh, pursue 2 years master's degree rather you can join one year masters degree program only that is enough so regarding the masters degree program there are three choices one is 3 plus 2 those who complete three years bachelors degree program may join two years pg degree program those who complete four years bachelors degree program how to complete one year masters degree program or otherwise they can join five years integrated masters degree program so what a flexibility is available for the students right then uh, regarding the another advantage of completing the four years master program i mean four years bachelor's degree program with the research regarding the phd it is the uh, uh, top most aim of every student i want to complete phd i want to become a doctorate 
yes of course at present the students must have completed the master's degree program in order to join a phd employees uh, in between the master's degree program and the phd program according to the proposed policy if you have completed four years bachelor uh, master's the bachelor's degree program with the research understand you are eligible you are eligible to join phd degree without uh, completing master's degree program see what a benefit for the four years bachelor's uh, students if you complete four years bachelor's program with research you can continue one year's master program or otherwise you can directly join phd program even without completing your master's degree program so for joining phd the basic eligibility is either master's degree or a four years bachelor's degree with research okay then here it is proposed to establish merus multidisciplinary education and research universities are to be set up like uh, uh, at par with iits iims etc they are called as merus multidisciplinary education and research in universities it is proposed to establish one such a uh, university in every district of every state it is proposed and it is the aim of the government to attain the highest global standards in quality education by establishing such universities and higher educational institutions across the country and another advantage of this uh, policy is global educational institutions are permitted to establish their institutions in our country at the same time the indian educational institutions are allowed to establish their institutions abroad in any country any indian educational institution may establish their educational higher educational institutions anywhere across the globe any country in the world they can establish their own educational institution the nep 2020 provides for such an opportunity then regarding the vocational education formal vocational system or education is to be provided you know at present the workforce indian workforce in the age group of 19 to 24 they don't have the uh, formal edu vocational education with less than 5% of such workforce only having the formal educational vocational education whereas in usa it is 52% in germany it is 75% in south korea it is the topest uh, country with 96% of formal vocational education the proposed policy wants to ascend the uh, spread of vocational education in india that is why from the 6th standard vocational education is to be introduced for every student and it is uh, to be integrated into all school and higher education institutions in a phased manner over the next decade see it's a snapshot about the uh, futures of uh, reforms regarding the school education as well as in the college education as i told you in the case of school education the system is changed from 10 plus 2 to 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 then 
multi stream then diluted board board curricular curriculum content is diluted multilingual and of course yet another uh, future is there backless days here the students need not bring their bags carry their books and notes for 10 days every year in a year for 10 days they need not bring any book note or bag they need not carry anything so there are 10 bagless days in those days an informal internship is provided or exposure is given uh, for the students regarding the occasion on their own charge regarding the college education as i told you four years uh, degree program is introduced and over the next 15 years the colleges affiliated to universities the system will be changed the greatest autonomy is to be given to all the students the affiliation system existing will be the done away will be uh, uh, pushed away all the uh, uh, degree conducting colleges will be given autonomy status gradually based on the accreditation they will be given permission to grant degrees also so here after next after the next 15 years the uh, degree giving permission is to be given to all the higher education institutions gradually so next one is free cap free cap that is the fee structure is to be uh, regulated by the higher education commission of india then going global as i told you know top rated global universities are uh, allowed to enter into india at the same time top indian universities are encouraged to go to i mean uh, to go global so these are the uh, various changes uh, various reforms uh, uh, proposed in the uh, educational policy 2020 uh this is the uh, certification style i told you know after first year certificate second year diploma third year bachelor's degree and fourth year bachelor's degree with research see this is the uh, uh, basic outlook of the national education policy 2020 and uh, at present uh, the mhrd that is ministry of human resource and development is the uh, ministry which regulates the higher education institutions here after this ministry will be renamed as uh, the ministry of education earlier the ministry was called as ministry of education only uh, in between it was changed as uh, ministry of uh, uh, human resource and development now again it is proposed to be renamed as ministry of education and affiliation system is to be phased out in the next 15 years and the norms and regulations will be common for all the private and public uh, higher education institutions in the country according to the uh, government's new education policy and all higher education institutions except legal and medical colleges will be governed by a single regulator i told you know governing uh, uh, body will be one and same then holistic and multidisciplinary education with the flexibility of subjects uh, is uh, proposed academic administrative and financial autonomy will be given to all the colleges on the basis of status of their accreditation and uh, one more item we want to know is regarding the universalization of education in the school level i told you know 100% ger gross enrollment ratio is expected uh, to be at 100% in the school level education by the year 2020 whereas in the case of higher education institution it is proposed to uh, 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 increase the ger up to uh, 50% by the year 2035 why because see at present the ger ratio of tamil nadu is 49% so almost if we have reached it you may ask then what is the uh, um, aim of the government to increase it by uh, to 50% uh, 
by 2035. Now we are in 2021 only. So in the um, uh, coming year itself, uh, we can reach the 50 percent. That doesn't matter. But here, as I told you, know uh, the government proposes to establish Nehru's in every district. So lakhs and lakhs of seats are to be increased. So if seats are increased, normally the GR is uh, proportionately reduced. So that is to be increased. See, 3.5 crores of seats are to be added to the higher education system. So only this target is fixed. That is 50 percent uh, uh, GER is to be uh, ensured in the year 2025. And regarding the uh, children, more than two crore children are out of school education. They are brought into mainstream. And regarding all other aspects, uh, we have already discussed. And now, I would like to uh, thank the management, principal, faculty members, and all the participants uh, for having given me the wonderful opportunity and to uh, patiently listen uh, uh, the uh, session and my presentation. And it is the time for all of you uh, to have any question. Excuse me, wait a minute. Participants, can I ask any of your questions? Uh, yes. Now you can ask any questions if you have regarding the proposed education policy. It is a wonderful policy introduced by the government. After 36 years in the Indian education history, for the first time, a brave step has been taken by the Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Damodas Modi ji he is one of the best, not one of the best, he is the best Prime Minister of our country so far because he has been taking various initiatives for the development of our country and this is one of the milestones of the uh, history of India. So that kind of uh, policy has been introduced and of course being academicians, being uh, uh, education is uh, we have to uh, adopt the policy and support the government for the academic development as well as the economic development of our country. I'd like to thank uh, all the participants and of course uh, my dear uh, friend uh, Professor Selvanathan for the wonderful opportunity given to me. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. If any clarification, you can ask. Dear participants, is there any questions? Please ask. Is there any clarification? Thank you very much, sir. Your speech gives a very good knowledge about the National Education Policy 2020. You explain the policy deeply in a simple language to understand. So we like your way of delivering, sir. Once again, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Enendri kontra orkum, ui gundam, ui villai, seinendri kontra magarke. Now I call upon our department staff, Dr. Kalai Sigamani, madam, to deliver vote of thanks. Ma'am, please. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much, ma'am. Good evening to all the players and knowledgeable participants. Welcome, madam. I take great pleasure in discussing the current topic at right time. 
It's my privilege to take this opportunity to propose a word of thanks in this webinar on clips of National Education Policy 2020. We are grateful to our Honorable Managing Board for encouraging I would like to thank and express our gratitude to our principal, Dr. P. Sundarabhanian sir, for his presence and providing our inaugural address. I would like to thank, express our sincere thanks to coordinator, self-finance programs, Dr. P. Pangyapan sir, for giving our excellent felicitation address. Thank, I thank our resource person, principal, Dr. P. Kumreshan sir. Thank you very much, sir. He pointed out. emphasize that the importance of multidisciplinary education he also mentioned that the recommendations for the use of mother tongue from the primary to a higher level is remarkable sir he said that the control of dropout students measures and he also new structure and college education system. Finally, he concluded that NUP 2020 is a gift for all students. Yes, sir. We all are gifted students. We can access the education wherever we are through the education policy 2020. We are really enlightened by your knowledge and presence, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I would like to thank our respected Hachuri, Mr. S. Devanathan, sir, to chief guest introduction and his guidance and support for this webinar. I would like to thank our respected staff members, Mr. Uh, or Balaji, sir, for his wonderful welcome address. I extend my thanks to our staff members for the enormous cooperation in the organization in this event. Our heartfelt thanks to our all participants and our students. Now, National Anthem. Pleasure, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. National Anthem. <laughs> 